I'm actually blown away that um, Uber would make such an admission, right? We underinvested in technology. And this comes from the Uber VP, Vice President and Global Head of Community Operations, Troy Stevenson. And I'm going to read you a little bit about the article. But imagine when coming out with such a statement, right, uh, while your stock is not performing well at all, and it's just like the icing on top of the cake. You know, we, we just didn't invest in technology. That's what the people believe you have, fool, right? They think you have the technology. That's why they put the money in. And then you come out and make such an idiotic statement, right? I would keep that under wraps, right? So the, uh, from, from, from the story that I've read, here they are just growing, growing the company, just interested in getting passengers and drivers in, passengers and drivers in, boom, boom, boom. And they're just not putting the money, the time and the effort into technology, right? Today, we know, at least on the technology side of safety and security, that's one thing I hammer them with every single week. Yes, you definitely underinvested in safety, security technology goes to show because you're in the media every two days for some sort of mishap, right? Um, this guy says his company focused too heavily on adding people to its platform rather than investing in a long-term business model when the startup thrusts its new ride-sharing concept into the, into the world back in 2009. So, hey, we, we, we should have thought long-term, right? That's what investors are looking for, investing into long-term. But, hey, we failed there. So we did not invest into long term. I mean, what type of message are you sending to Wall Street? What what type of message are you sending to the moms and pops who are looking at putting, you know, hundred, five hundred thousand dollars into the stock? Right. Definitely not well thought through there. And that goes again uh, for the rest of the executive management. You know, talk, talk, talk. Not really thinking about what you're talking. Remember, um, Derek Kay making that. Dumb comment on Axios about Jamal Khashoggi, right? This guy here making this idiotic statement about technology. Troy West, the legal eagle, making that idiotic um, comment about drivers. I mean, who's running the show here, ladies and gentlemen? And again, it shows that their behavior, their statements definitely reflects in the stock, right? So you need to flush them all out, including this Troy Stevenson. No good. He says, I think because we're trying to add people at such a pace, we probably underinvested in technology along the way. He said, speaking at Dreamforce 2019 in San Francisco last week, the tech team that supports my organization when I started three years ago was maybe a dozen people. Our ability to kind of build what we needed into the apps and build little integrations with it was pretty scant. Wow. According to Stevenson, what Uber has since done to rectify this overeager attitude to scale its platform was invest in its teams as well as its agents. We've also found great tech partners to work with, Stevenson said, pointing to Salesforce as one example. Now, I've used Salesforce and I can tell you they are solid and just look at how they're behaving um, stock-wise. That, that, that company is solid right so there you are partnering with someone that really knows their stuff and that is a name you definitely want to drop name drop in such an article we realize that we don't need to be <clears throat> the expert on everything and our tech stack you know there's parts where we think it's a unique competitive edge and that's what we want to focus our resources and there's other parts where we don't need to reinvent the wheel on every aspect of the experience goes on and on and on. He says, Stevenson said in the early days of Uber, the startup was very reticent to work with partners outside of its ecosystem that probably slowed us down more than we needed to. And I think as we grew, as we scaled enterprise sales and knowledge basis and things like that, when it's not proprietary part of the company, but it's a really critical part of the experience, we pulled together partners to help us with that right? And it goes on and on and on. So I have a message for um, Troy Stevenson. If you're listening up, if you're listening in, um, you've already made this admission. You already 
partnering now uh, with companies, which I think is a good thing, that bring their expertise in. Could you do me a huge favor? Could you do all drivers and all passengers a huge, huge favor, Troy Stevenson, and seek out or partner with companies that are experts in the safety and security technology field and allow them to bring in their platforms, their know-how, their technology, so that people don't get assaulted in cars, people don't get raped, people don't get sexually, uh, whatever, killed, raped, you name it. I think I've covered the whole deck, right? <clears throat> but this is who Troy needs to be reaching out to, right? Because that is one thing us drivers and passengers demand from the company. Keep us safe. Don't just focus on the money, right? And find all the ways to make your company more and more and more and more profitable. Focus on your people, focus on their safety, focus on their well-being, you know, focus on their happiness, focus on building trust bridges to these individuals. That is where I think Troy Stevenson could bring in a wealth of new technology and partnerships and serve the drivers and passengers better. Thank you and have a great day. Please feel free to comment.